Hey guys, it's XGomet, and I'm going to show you guys all my budget modern odd nauseam deck. Now, anyways, this deck is, uh, I don't know, it's alright. It's not the greatest combo deck, and it's not the greatest odd nauseam deck, and both of those reasons are because it is pretty low budget. Um, the only real expensive card in here is a place at a path to exile, and that is by far not necessary for the deck at all. So this deck is just great if you want to just uh, build yourself a nice, uh, cheap, modern deck to uh, bring to F&M, have some fun, and win a few games with. So, anyways. Now the reason we're starting off with Ad Nauseam is obviously Ad Nauseam is the main part of the deck. And you're not really going to understand the deck unless I tell you the whole Ad Nauseam combo first. So that's what I'm going to do first. Basically with Ad Nauseam, as you can see, I don't know if you can see the... Uh, screen on my camcorder is pretty small so I can't tell if you can read that or not but anyways it says you can reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand you then lose life equal to its converted mana cost and then you can repeat the process any number of times now the last part of that ability is the main thing that's gonna let you win the game with this now you might think oh I don't have endless life so I can't do that endlessly well you can if you have something that can prevent the damage or make it so you can't lose the game now, here's our first card that can do that. This is Angel's Grace. It has split second, meaning it basically can't be countered. They can't do anything as long as it's on the stack. And it states that you can't lose the game this turn, and your opponents can't win this game. And until end of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Now, since the Ad Nauseam gives you life loss, this won't prevent you from going negative. But since you can't lose the game that turn, it won't matter. So basically what you do is you would cast an Angel's Grace before you cast an Ad Nauseam, so that when you cast the Ad Nauseam, you can draw out your whole library and not lose the game. So that you have every card in your library in your hand. Now the other card that allows you to do this is Phyrexian Unlife. This makes it so you don't lose the game for having zero or less life, and as long as you have zero or less life, all damage is dealt to you as though it's source had an effect. Once again, since Ad Nauseam is not dealing damage to you, it is making you lose life, this will just make you go extremely negative rather than getting a bunch of poison counters and killing yourself. So, those are the ways you're going to survive while drawing every card in your deck, and then once you have every card in your deck, this is your win condition. First, you're just going to exile three Simeon Spirit Guide, they're pretty nice, just a common 3 mana 2-2, two -two. and you can remove it from your hand to add one red mana to your mana pool. Now since you have three of those and you're going to have your whole library, you will have three red mana and you'll be able to Lightning Storm. And Lightning Storm is an instant three red. It allows you to deal three damage to a creature player plus X, where X is the number of charge counters on it. And to put a charge counter on it, you discard a land counter. I'm going to land counter. <laughs> you discard a land card. And that'll put two charge counters on it, not just one. And obviously since every deck has about, you know, 23 or more land, you've got enough land to just discard and make that upwards of maybe 20 to 40 damage. So that's your win condition. Um, that's your whole combo. So basically the whole deck just revolves around being able to cast those as soon as possible and before you lose the game, obviously, from them beating your face down. Now, cards that help this deck work, I just dropped one of them, so that's great. But cards that help this deck work are Serum Visions and Sleight of Hand, which are basically staples in any modern combo deck because they're just nice little one mana spells that allow you to draw cards and set up the top cards of your library so that you can draw your combos quicker. So you've got eight little one mana blue spells that'll help you get your combos quicker. So they're very, very nice. And uh, if you're going to build this deck, I would absolutely recommend having these eight. Uh, place out of each obviously because otherwise It's gonna be pretty hard to get your combo off before they're just gonna kill you with your normal stuff Another thing that allows you to do your combo faster is Pentad Prism uh, It's got Sunburst which means it comes into play with a charge counter on it for each color of mana used to pay its cost and since you're a three color deck This will always have at least uh, two counters on it It'll have three if they have something that makes it cost one more mana and you pay 
you know, three different colors of mana, but that's a very rare occasion. So basically just expect this to have two charge counters on it. And what it does is you can remove a charge counter from it to add a mana of any color to your mana pool. Now, this basically, you play this out on turn two, you've got yourself the two charge counters on it so that on turn three you already have five mana. Um, five mana isn't enough for your combo, you need at least six or you need to have a Phyrexian Unlife on the field. Once you have a Phyrexian Unlife on the field, your, your combo only costs five. But uh, it does help you get it on, get your combo consistently on at least turn four, which is definitely nice and you want that. Now just a second fidget with my camcorder so it doesn't turn off for no reason. I probably should have edited those settings, but anyways. Uh, speaking of the camcorder, this is a really new camcorder, so I'm sorry the video is probably going to be pretty bad quality, but I tried my best. Um, basically, everyone's recommending to get the best quality out of this. Uh, you need a lot of light. <laughs> I think I might have done too much light because there's this glare showing on the sleeves and everything, but anyways, I should continue with the deck. Um, your only other two cards that will help you get this combo quicker are a Mystical Teachings and a Diabolic Tutor. I would definitely recommend having another Mystical Teachers rather than the Diabolic Tutor. Uh, the Diabolic Tutor is four mana, search your library for a card, put it into your hand. So basically with the Diabolic Tutor you can search for Odd Nauseam and same with Mystical Teachings. Um, the reason I would recommend Mystical Teachings over Odd Nauseam is because it has an easier mana cost. It's just one blue and three rather than two black and two. And uh, Mystical Teachings is also an instant. And um, if you can't read that, Mystical Teachings lets you search your library for an instant card or a card with flash, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So since Ad Nauseum's an instant and uh, Angel's Grace is an instant, this will let you get either of your combo pieces that you need. So it basically does the same thing Diabolic Tutor allows you to do, except you have to reveal it, which is really not much of an issue because they're going to know that you're going to have those in your hand, obviously playing a combo deck. Um, but yeah, not only does this have an easier mana cost and is instant, it also has flashback in case the game lasts that long and you, they, uh, counter your combo or something. It's got a flashback for a black and five, which is definitely not an incredibly unreasonable mana cost in this deck. So I would recommend having more mystical teachings, but sadly I only have one and I didn't really feel like buying them, but I probably should because they're really cheap. Um, but anyways, now... Here we have four Inquisition of Kozilek. Um, I bought this deck. Well, I didn't buy this deck. I had a lot of the cards for this deck, such as all these Inquisitions I just had from playing Rise of the Eldrazi. Um, these guys are actually kind of expensive. I believe they're like, I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but I think they're like four bucks a pop, which is kind of crazy for an uncommon, like from Rise of the Eldrazi, but... These cards really, really help you out with slowing down your opponent so that they can't kill you before you can do your combo. Um, the reason they're so good is because, basically, you want to be consistently casting your combo either on turn 4 or 5, and this lets you take anything that they're going to be doing on turn 1, 2, or 3, so it really, really slows them down, such as, you know, uh, if you're playing against some kind of aggressive deck, you can take out their Tarmogoy from their hand. Um, if you're somehow playing against like a mirror match, you can take their Angel's Grace out. But uh, this Ad Nauseam deck, uh, it isn't really used incredibly often. But yeah, this card's really versatile. Just anything they're going to be doing early on, you can take, no matter what it is. Um, well, I mean, not lands, but that's pretty standard on discard spells. Now, if you don't want to pop, if you don't want to pop, if you don't want to... I can't remember the quote. There's some kind of saying about spending money, but if you don't want to spend the money on those, you can just get duresses instead, um, which are decent, but the problem with duress is it doesn't get creatures, so if you're playing against a aggressive deck that has basically nothing but creatures, that's going to be a really dead card to you, because most aggressive decks will have nothing but creatures and some removal spells, and obviously removal spells are useless against you, because you have no creatures, except the Simian Spear Guides, which you're never going to cast. So, uh, Duress, I wouldn't really recommend it because there's a lot of times it can be a dead card, but if you don't want to get the Inquisitions, and obviously you don't want to get the, the uh, Thought Seizes if you don't want to get Inquisitions, because Thought Seize, um, it's, it's better than Inquisition even, because it lets you have your opponent discard any card of your choice that is non-land, 
but you have to pay two life for it, which isn't much of a problem. The only problem with that card is it's quite a bit of money, but yeah, uh, just the discard route definitely helps slow down your opponent in the early game. You would have one of those three cards, Duress, Inquisition, or Thoughtseize, but yeah, Duress is probably, you know, that's the extremely poor man's option. But anyways, uh, here we have a place at a path to exile. Now this is not even as necessary as the Inquisitions are. This is just a really good removal spell, once again, to help you just slow down your opponents. Now, obviously this only works against aggressive decks, but almost every other deck in Modern uses uh, some nice aggressive creatures. Um, so this definitely helps you out a lot, and it's really cheap, so it doesn't really slow down how quick you're going to be casting your combo. So, I would definitely recommend Path to Exile, but if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna pay for the paths, you can get any other form of cheaper removal. Would be fine, such as you know you could use Go for the Throats if you want. I don't know how much Despises are running for, but you could use Despises. You could use Doom Blades, Terrors if you really <laughs> have to. Um, but basically, you just want to have some sort of uh, nice quick removal to slow down your opponent. And going along those lines, we also have two Smother in here, and Smother is really, really good as well, because <clears throat> you can just, very similar to the Thoughtseize, you can stop any kind of uh, creature that they're going to be doing early on, whereas the Thoughtseize can uh, stop any kind of spell they're going to be casting early on. Um, so yeah, Thought, I mean, thought <laughs> Smother is pretty good. It can kill most of the creatures actually played in Modern, um, well, obviously not like Huntmaster and stuff like that, but it can stop Tarmogoyf, which is the most important creature to be stopping, basically, um, because he just gets huge quickly, and then it can also stop, you know, pesky fairies such as Vendillion Click and others, but yeah. It's been a <laughs> if you can't tell, it's been quite a while since I played Modern, but I'm playing this deck at FNM this week, so I'll see how it does once again, but... Uh, it is a very fun deck, so even if it utterly fails, I would recommend playing it just because it's so fun. But <laughs> anyways, we're done with all the main parts of the deck. Now we're just on to the lands. Now, being a budget deck, the lands can be however you like them as long as you've got, you know, the right ratios. You could even use all basic lands if you want, and you wouldn't be hurt that much because you do have the Pentat Prisms. Um, basically, I'm running a slightly budget mana base. I do have some rare lands in here, but they're not expensive ones. Drown Catacombs are pretty cheap because they were in M10, M11, M12, and M13. So all my lands are the M11... Well, the M set duels, which are all pretty cheap, so I just have four Drowned Catacomb, and then two Glacial Fortress. Oh, I forgot, I actually have two of the Innistrad duels, which are the exact same as the uh, the M duels, except they're enemy colors. So I have two Isolated Chapel, which is probably the most expensive duel in here. I haven't checked the prices. Um, I just got these from uh, drafting, but pretty sure Isolated Chapel is more expensive than all the, uh, the, M, the M set duels. And then just a bunch of lands, you know... Based on what cards you're running, such as if you're using more Mystical Teachings, not using that Diabolic Tutor, maybe you're using Black Removal rather than the Paths, uh, the ratio of your lands might change. Uh, all you gotta do is just, you know, calculate that yourself based on what you're playing, just like any other deck. So, uh, after that I'll talk about sideboard options. I actually don't have my sideboard with me right now, which is kind of strange, but... <laughs> My sideboard's actually kind of interesting and kind of bad at the same time. You probably don't want to use a sideboard like mine, but my sideboard actually has four trinket mages because my sideboard uses cards like two pithing needles to stop any kind of planeswalkers, or if someone's using a version of like this deck and they're using a, a seismic assault. You can just stop Seismic Assault. Same with if they're using the deck that just runs a bunch of lands, Countryside Crushers. You know, it can stop that deck too. <clears throat> and then, uh... Let's see. The other things I use with that is Graft Digger's Cage. Graft Digger's Cage is good at stopping graveyard strategies. Obviously, that's the whole point of the card. Um, if you don't know what kind of cards I'm talking about, you can just stop watching the video now because I don't have copies with me. I could, uh post links to all the cards in the description, but you can just search them up. 
I hope I'm not talking too strangely for you to understand what cards I'm saying, but... Then Engineered Explosives is a kind of non-budget off option to use. Um, that can just kill just all tokens just right off the bat. Um, and then, you know, just stuff like Dispel and Spell Pierce, just cheap counter spells to stop your opponents uh, from disrupting your combo. And then, um, so the two other non-budget, uh, pretty popular options for this deck are having a playset of Lotus Bloom and having a playset of Pact of Negation. Now, Lotus Bloom, you can suspend it for zero mana, and it is a suspend three, so you put three time counters on it, three turns later you get it onto the battlefield. Um, what it does is you can tap it, sacrifice it, add three mana of any color to your mana pool. So that card is definitely very good, again, for letting you get your combo out quickly. So lots of people run a playset of that if you're okay with uh, scarfing up the money. And then also a playset of Pact of Negation. Now this will just get them to stop you from countering your combo because it's a zero mana counter spell. Um, except you have to pay five mana at the beginning of your next upkeep or you lose the game. But obviously if you're comboing off on them and they're trying to counter your combo and you can just counter that for free, you're not going to be going to your next upkeep anyway because they'll be dead from your combo. But anyways, that is my modern deck. It's quite a bit of fun. Um, a lot of people think combo decks aren't fun, but I don't know. I don't care. I like it. It's fun. It's fun to me. So anyways, uh, I hope you liked it. I don't know if you did. You probably hated it because you hate me. <laughs> nah, because you hate combo decks. Everybody does. But yeah. I'll see you all next time I post a video, which it has been a long time, so it'll probably be a long time again. But I'll see you.